Does it matter if uh, I talk or not in these videos? Um, well, it's time to start something new, so I'm going to try to talk to you about Charlie X. Charlie X was a human who um, was uh, marooned on a planet and uh, extraterrestrials um, oversaw his um, growing up into a young man. And then what happened? Well, um, lo and behold, uh, people found him on this planet and he certainly looked human and there was a record of um, his parents ship um, going in this direction so they put it all together and they figured out um, sort of what his story was and uh, well what happened was eventually he got on board the Starship Enterprise from Star Trek and uh, then weird things started happening with Charlie X Charlie X was extremely uh, beyond psychic, way beyond psychic. Psychic is like you sort of kind of know things, you know, you sort of you just know things. But Charlie X's uh, supernatural powers were way beyond that. Charlie X could um, he could change matter, he could change people, and um, he could um, make things disappear he could use his mind to take over the Starship Enterprise from its regular crew. Uh, he was a very powerful sorcerer, let's say, and very dangerous to people who had no uh, abilities to protect themselves from his uh, witchcraft or magicianship. Uh, and uh, this was one of the very early, early episodes of Star Trek when it came out in, you know, like 1968. So, um, why did um, Gene Roddenberry and the uh, crew at Star Trek want us to know about supernatural people on this uh, space soap opera, Star Trek? It's just that the early episodes, if you go on Netflix and go to season one of original Star Trek and start watching, it's not even about space it's about sorcerers many 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 sorcerers people who had very strong supernatural powers what's that got to do with space travel that's what they wanted to present to us so um, Charlie X could do these things there were other characters that in the early supernatural supernatural what was going on in like the Nate late 1960s that would prompt up all of this talk about supernatural I mean in addition to this stuff in Star Trek you had bewitched which is about a witch living in among regular humans You had I Dream of Genie, where a genie has uh, abilities to change reality. We had the Twilight Zone, but weird goings on.
We had the Weird family, the Adams family. Now, did they have psychic powers? I think they were highly intuitive people. Highly intuitive. They found regular people that looked like me to be, well, I think they found us boring, the Adams family. And the monsters, again. So uh, this was um, all over television in uh, the late 1960s. And why is it relevant to us today? Well, it's relevant to me because that's the kind of shows that I watched when I was a little kid. And at the time, we weren't taught anything about real witchcraft. We were told it's just like Halloween. It's dress up, uh, you know, it's just fun stories and, you know, it's totally fiction. Why weren't we taught about um, real witches? I think it was the religious police. When I was a child, uh, churches had a very strong role in uh, society. Very strong uh, um, laws were passed by the governments that were at the behest of um, church people. So, you know, the famous example would be um, very strong restrictions on what businesses uh, could be open on a Sunday what you could do on a Sunday, laws about morality, censorship. Uh, so uh, the churches uh, didn't want anything taught about um, witchcraft. Did anybody actually believe that uh, witchcraft was real in those days? Well, in literature, going way back to William Shakespeare, there was talk about witches. So, you know, anybody who'd read a lot would see that this is an ongoing theme in human literature, going back hundreds of years, witchcraft. And, um, but we, we weren't even told that there were people who were interested in this as being a real thing. We were totally censored from anything to do with supernatural. Why? Well, it was the government that set the curriculum and the government was um, holding hands with the churches. Probably because um, there was a lot of people that went to church in those days and um, if you wanted to get elected you had to make sure that you had the churchgoers vote. Perhaps. I'm taking these long pauses and I don't know why. Just so you know, like if it seems like I'm taking really long pauses here, um, I'm also going, why am I taking a long pause? It's not me when I'm doing these talks. Um, it's just the words that come. And whoever is writing this script has put long pregnant pauses in here and I don't know why. If you're still with me, um, did you get anything in these long pauses? Anything from your own memory come up about these particular topics? Maybe that's what they wanted you to do, is have some time when I wasn't talking to see if something was going to come up in your mind on the subject. Or maybe you're like me and you're going, No, I hurry up, we need some more words here or something, no. No, no, there's nothing more to tell you. So whatever you got, you got, and whatever I got was absolutely nothing. I don't have any other words in my head other than uh, Brant, you know, my um, famous uh, spirit who um, uh, quite often talks. I can hear Brant talking. He has questions that he's asking the people who are going to have me talk, and they're not answering Brant. And they're not really um, 
giving me anything. I don't hear their voices, but somebody is giving me these words in these long pregnant pauses and is pissing off Brant. And I understand why, because he's got questions. And um, when I'm talking, that's is the only... In any event, I, I don't have anything more to tell you on the subject other than something was up in the 1960s and it had to do with doing magical things. And uh, these were, you know, comedy shows, lighthearted comedy with the backdrop. Well, I don't know, the Star Trek really wasn't comedy. It was like Charlie X was doing really mean-spirited things to people. So you can go on Netflix and uh, watch Charlie X, and um, then you can look at, like, uh, The Squire of Gothos. You could look at the original pilot, um, The Cage, it's called, or The Menagerie was when they recut uh, that those episodes. Uh, and this is all about people with supernatural powers and really nothing to do with space. Like, why do you have to have this on a space show? It had nothing to do with being out in outer space. Nothing to do with space travel whatsoever. It had everything to do with magic. Over and over and over again, we'll go to some place and there's going to be a magician there. So, um, I don't know what else to tell you other than this is a curiosity. And, um, were they trying to send us a message about this? That if you're a kid and you're watching Star Trek and you're just saying, well, if we ever do get out there into space and travel to other stars, we're going to find supernatural people because that's where they are. They're on other planets and other star systems. We know that Mr. Spock from planet Vulcan, who is the first officer of the Enterprise, um, has got uh, uh, psychic powers. You can do the Vulcan mind meld, for example. Is it just like trying to show us humans that don't have supernatural powers that we're missing something? That for some reason um, these other beings have got superpowers? Who do you know that's got superpowers? Some people have got a good intuition. Some people are really good with playing with the tarot deck or the Ouija board. But, you know, we really don't ever meet anybody who can do real magic. There's card tricks you know, like card trick magicians and some of these things, but pretty much we know somehow it has to do with slate of hand, which is just very dexterous hands and certain uh, angles that, you know, between the card magician and where you're looking and these angles make it so he can hide things and do funny things and use misdirection so that we're not paying attention at that moment. I think a lot of times these people actually could do real magic because it seems like they're like going over the top with misdirections and I'm, I'm not being looking at the misdirection. I'm looking right at the cards. And, um, so then the next thing I say, Oh, it's, it's like, uh, it's using tricks, video tricks, you know, they're, they're stopping the frame and then they're changing the cards and then they're lining it up again. And, um, you know, then they're starting the camera again. So they're, they're but you know, a lot of times you'll watch these people who are videoing these things and, well, I know the software is available that's way more advanced than anything I have access to, so maybe that's what they're doing. Um, but generally speaking, um, among normal humans, um, if anybody starts talking about sorcery, magic, or witchcraft, um, people are going to either go, oh, that's interesting, and, um, you know, it's like a Tupperware party or something. It's not real magic. Uh, or people think you're, well, you're an emo kind of person. You like to dress goth or something. You like to have a certain kind of tattoos. It's part of your image or whatever. But nobody really believes that, you know, that real magic exists. It's too bad because when you're a child and you see so many people doing magic on TV, you, you think that's cool. And um, as a child, you're interested in these things. But very soon becomes passe and you know you hit your teenage years and then your hormones start going and the last thing you're thinking about is doing fun things like magic thank you for watching please subscribe share and tune in tomorrow